Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, this webinar is going to be covering uh, how to understand and navigate your QCDR feedback reports. Uh, our presenter today is going to be Devapriya Singupta. She's the manager of uh, registry data analytics for ACR. And uh, before she starts, I just want to go over a couple of housekeeping items. If you have any questions during the course of the webinar, you can enter those into the question box and we'll respond to those as they come through. Uh, you can also click the hand raise icon, and uh, if we have any time at the end of the webinar, we'll um, unmute you so you can ask your question on the line. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, uh, last webinar we talked about the Improvement Activities tab, and we gave a short demo of that. Uh, we just want to let you know that we're in the process of getting that rolled out. Uh, we had a little hiccup with it today, so it's not available right now, but we expect that it will be available within the next week. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about that, so, um, so just uh, hold off a few more days and you'll be able to attest to your improvement activities in the MIPS portal. Um, and without further ado, I'll hand it over to Deba Priya. Thanks. Thank you, Zach. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining uh, in this uh, webinar. We will get started right away because we have a lot of material to cover. Today's webinar is uh, about navigating your QCDR feedback reports. <clears throat> in today's webinar, we are going to cover uh, the data submission for non-MIPS and MIPS measures how to access your QCDR preview reports for non-MIPS and MIPS measures, interpreting QCDR feedback reports for non-MIPS measures. And we do have a poll. So uh, Zach, can you please administer the poll? We just want to uh, know how many of you have uh, accessed QCDR feedback reports. Okay, that's uh, just about everybody responded to that. Uh, it looks like it's split about 50-50. We've got 46% uh, saying yes, they have, 52% saying no. Okay, so um, I, I think then that this webinar is going to be informative for most of you. Um, so let's uh, get started. Um, we all know that uh, these are the registries that support QCDR, uh, Qualified Clinical Data Registry. IR is a new member uh, and it has uh, new measures. Uh, I will go over each of these registry measures as it applies to QCDR and show you how you can use your QCDR preview reports to preview your measures and what information you can get from the QCDR preview reports. Beginning 2014, the NRDR was approved as quality clinical, a qualified clinical data registry by CMS. This slide shows the QCDR supported measures um, for MIPS and non-MIPS. Uh, MIPS stands for merit-based incentive payment systems and it has 50 plus measures. And each of these other uh, registries have a certain number of measures approved by CMS. For example, CT colonography registry has two measures, dose index registry has three measures, so on and so forth. Now uh, let's go into uh, the discussion of how uh, we submit data for um, measures. Uh, first, let's go into MIPS measure data submission. So uh, for MIPS, uh, data submission, uh, you can use Excel or text files, and uh, sh this should be, sub should be submitted via MIPS portal as a web-based data upload using uh, the documents that you see in the slides. Um, 
um, web services uh, API is also available for MIPS data submission. <clears throat> QCDR participants access a portal de designed especially to manage the MIPS participation process. This is called MIPS portal. The MIPS portal provides location for MIPS uh, measure file upload. This is where you upload your MIPS measure files and uh, review of quality measures, performance scores, and comparison to benchmarks, review accuracy of volume. And um, this MIPS mode portal uh, provides the measures, both MIPS and non-MIPS. So all of your QCDR measures should appear here. Selection of measure and required attestations prior to CMS submission is also uh, done here. So the MIPS portal is very important portal that you should uh, access if you are planning to submit uh, QCDR measures. Physician and group level performance data available for all physicians across uh, multiple locations and teams. So in the MIPS portal, you will see your chain level aggregates and um, NPI level aggregates. This is a screenshot for MIPS measure data elements. And uh, I just, uh, I'm not going, to, going through it, but I just wanted to show you how that looks. And we have this available in our website. Please go and take a look at this and let us know if you have any question about this. Um, we also have MIPS data upload uh, file specifications. So when you upload your MIPS data, your MIPS data should, be, uh, should follow the specification that is specified in this, uh, in this file. And this is also a screenshot of 2017 MIPS measure coding uh, that has a measure number, CPT codes, numerator and denominator, <clears throat> numerator and diagnosis codes. And uh, again, this is available in our website. Uh, from our website, you can see a sample MIPS uh, data file, which is in Excel. Uh, this shows how your data should be formatted. If your data is not correctly formatted, it, w it will not be able to upload your data successfully. You will get an error. So now uh, let's move into the non-MIPS measure submission. In this table, uh, we have a summarized form of how you can submit the uh, non mist measure for registries. And below is a link. Um, if you click, you can uh, access the full table. Um, and for your information, we will uh, post the slides after the webinar is um, over. So everyone can get a copy of the slides for your uh, reference. So QCDR preview reports, when do I find them? This is the timeline of the QCDR preview reports for, uh, we are in uh, Q3, so July to September um, reports should, uh, we will start issuing your reports in November. So in November, we uh, some of you already have received the CTC reports and other registry reports are coming up. So throughout November and December, we will be issuing the Q3 reports for, uh, for QCDR, where you can preview your reports. Now, uh, where do I find them? For, 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 you, for all of you who have never accessed the QCDR preview report, um, this is an uh, important piece of information. So you go to NRDR uh, registry portal and log in with your username and password. And then uh, you, on the left-hand side, you see uh, it is uh, highlighted in the registries is highlighted. You click that. And then you know, under the reports, for example, DIR, another report, if you click DIR, if you want to access the DIR aggregate report, uh, you click aggregate reports, 
and there you go you can find the download link where you can download your reports for each of the registries uh, you you can log in and click that registry and follow the same process to download the report for that registry now a few basic uh, things about key city preview report what they can tell me so uh, you will get the following information from the QCDR report. Am I submitting data? Is ACR getting what I am submitting? Is my data complete? Is my data accurate? Is my facility or NPI's performance comparable to others? These are the information that QCDR report can tell you. Now let's go into what they cannot tell you. So QCD reports are not, uh, cannot answer the questions such as, what is exactly my performance score going to be for 2017? And will I get a penalty adjustment or not? And the uh, um, reason for uh, those, and let, let me go back to the, this slide. Reason uh, we cannot exactly tell you, or QCD reports cannot exactly tell you, uh, the answer to this question is first, um, in, in QCDR preview report, you will see your um, performance compared to the registry performance, which is going to be your performance score is going to be very close to what you see in the QCDR preview reports, but it may not exactly reflect your performance scores because this is based on registry data, number one. Um, it is current year's data, and when CMS scores, they score it based on previous year's data, most, mostly where uh, the data is available for previous year. And secondly, not everyone who, who participates in registry also submits data using registry. So uh, number of participants who uh, sub submit at the end of the year is uh, different or less than who participates in registry. And uh, right now, we do not know how many people will submit and who exactly will submit. So your performance score will be evaluated depending on who exactly submits. And uh, the second question is, will I get a penalty or adjustment? It really depends on a uh, number of complex uh, calculations that uh, that CMS does, and that is beyond the scope of this webinar or QCDR preview report. So we cannot really tell you that information. CTC or CTC colonography registry, um, it has um, <clears throat> two uh, non-MIPS measures uh, for QCDR. Uh, you need to submit all exams done in 2017, January to December. Uh, you can submit retrospective data, but uh, as uh, we always tell you to uh, optimize the benefit of seeing performance scores, please submit data early and throughout the year. Don't submit the data at the end of the year for the whole year. Then you don't get to get the benefit, uh, see the benefits of actually participating in a registry. <clears throat> Then uh, CMS, uh, for CMS, you do a manual data submission using our web uh, accessible form. And um, here is a link for the form uh, that, uh, that is used for CTC data submission. These are the two measures, CT colonography, true positive rate, and clinically significant extractor colonial findings. QCDA preview reports are separate PDF reports, year-to-date generated quarterly. And this is a, a QCDA uh, report. Uh, you can, uh, this is a part of the sample report. Um, and you can see uh, the true positive rate, true positive rate, which is ACRAD1. And Clinically significant extracolonic findings, if you had two in the last two rows. And you can compare for this physician uh, measures or performance with the CTC registry 
whole year to date performance. And this is 2016, an example from 2017, uh, 2016, but for 2017 participation, we will use 2017 measures. CTC measures are performance uh, percentage measures, and the greater the number, it is better. This is the physician uh, 995, physician's performance. And this is the facility performance in which the physician is a part. Um, and then this is the registry performance as a whole. Next, let's go to NMD or National Mammography Data Database. For NMD, we need one year it, uh, one year of follow-up data. So all exams, all screening exams done in 2016, January to December uh, will be included, including follow-up through 2017. Again, retrospective data summation is possible, uh, but you should not wait till the, uh, until the last moment to submit your data. NMD offers five non-mixed measures. And QCDR preview reports are parts of aggregate reports. For NMD, uh, you can do web-based data upload, or as well as certified vendors can generate NMD-compatible files for upload. In-house IT systems may also submit data to the NMD as long as it is formatted correctly. Then um, NMD measures, you can see ACRAT 3, we, we got rid of 4, previously it was 4, there was a measure ACRAT 4 as well. So now it is ACRAT 3, ACRAT 5, 6, 7, and 8. This is a screenshot from your um, NMD, um, NMD uh, feedback report, and uh, currently the measures listed in the uh, measure definite measures are listed in the measure definition definition page. At the beginning of the report, we will mark these inside as well, just um, like you see now, um, right in the slide I have marked ACRAT 5 is the recall rate, and for the physician, you can see it is 10.95%. If you compare with the all NMD facilities, it is 9.73%. Um, then for ACRAD 6, is cancer and PV2 is uh, ACRAD uh, 6. Again, it is for the physician, it is 40%. For registry, it is 22%. Cancers are, and CDR, which is cancer detection rate per thousand, is 6.18 per thousand for the physician and 4.13 per thousand for uh, registry. The minimal cancer rate is ACRAD 8. Um, and you can compare likely, uh, you know, similarly to other measures. ACRAD 7 is nodal status. Um, negative um, uh, negative nodal status this a percentage again 75 percent for the physician and um, registry for registry it is 85 a little above 85 percent uh, green general radiology improvement database has uh, for reporting you, you can submit 2017 data, again, January to December. Um, GREED offers six anonymous measures. You must submit exam level data for GREED. For people who are um, participating in GREED, uh, might be, sometimes they are confused. There are two kinds of data submission for GREED. One is monthly data submission, which is for registry purpose only. Well, if you are, um, if you want to use your grid measures for QCDR purposes, then you must submit exam level data. You cannot use monthly data for um, for QCDR. 
So again, uh, automated data submission of exam level data to grid may meet a meaningful use objective for reporting to a clinical data registry. Uh, data submission for grid, you can use web-based flat file data uploads uh, and also electronic submissions using uh, web-based services. These are the six uh, non mesh measures from GREED. You can see that 15 through 19, previously we had AC at 20, we got rid of that. Um, and now we have report on time mammography, which is a new measure, AC at 25. Mammography turnaround times were previously uh, counted in AC at 15. It was a part of um, radiography and mammography turnaround time. So now each of them has separate turnaround time and each of these are separate measures. For greed, um, you will see something similar uh, to this uh, for your Q1, Q2 reports. For Q3 report, we will also include uh, the decile information, uh, which I will um, I will come to it uh, in a bit. So your measure for facility uh, one two three eight five three. This is a uh, this is facility level measure uh, for phys this is a physician level measure for the physician. You can see in the title, uh, the physician NPI is showing. Um, so um, for each of these ACRs, for example, ACRs 15, first column shows the data submitted to GREED, the number of exams submitted to GREED, and then how many exams were excluded is under the exclusion column. Reporting denominator is the total number of exams that qualify for the denominator for that measure. And performance measure is 14, which is a continuous measure. Um, and uh, that is your performance, co performance uh, score. And then uh, you, this is the aggregate across physicians in your facility. Uh, so all the um, physicians in your facility, how they are performing, that is their performance measure. Um, you can see it in the performance measure mean column, and then the standard deviation, then performance measure mean for the registry, you can see for the registry for radiography turnaround time, it is nine, nine in, it is in hours. And uh, the performance measure for that physician was 14. So it was higher than registry mean. Uh, these are inverse uh, continuous measures. So the lower your number, the better it is. Next, uh, let's uh, go to ACSR Lung Cancer Screening Registry. For 2017 reporting, just like NMD, we need one year of follow-up uh, data. So all the uh, screening exams done in 2016 from January to December is going to be included. You can submit uh, retrospective data and LCSR offers three non mix measures. Um, QCDR preview reports are generated quarterly and a part of the aggregate report. For data submission, you can uh, submit the data manually using our web accessible form. You can do web-based flat file upload, and you can also uh, do uh, web services. Uh, certified vendors can generate LCSR Compatible files for upload or web-based data transmission in-house IT systems may also um, become certified to submit data to LCSR. And if you go to LCSR user guide, section four um, talks about how it, you can submit your data. Here are the three non missed measure we have from LCSR. Uh, 
um, that's a screenshot of uh, a CSR uh, preview report. Um, and you can see for this, we are comparing the physician performance to all LCSR registry data, um, just uh, comparing the percentage. So, for example, abnormal, of abnormal interpretation rate or ACRAT 23 was 18%. And also for, the, for this physician, also if you see, um, the registry level was pretty close. So. Um, that's a kind of, uh, those are the two columns you need to take a look if you are uh, comparing the physician to see where the physician is compared to other physicians or registry as a whole. So I forgot to mention this uh, abnormal interpretation rate and CDR or cancer detection rate are non-inverse measures, meaning larger number is better. PPV is an inverse measure, meaning smaller number is better. So now let's uh, talk about DIR or dose index registry, and this is going to take a little bit of our time, more, more time than the other registries, and because um, we have three uh, new uh, non mix measure from DIR, and um, I want to show you how we do the calculation for DIR. Um, again, for DIR, all exams done in 2017 are going to be counted from January to December for 2017 submission. You can submit retrospective data in DIR as well, but uh, might require scheduling if um, many if you are submitting many months of data. Um, at once, and we do not really encourage that, but it, it is certainly doable if that is something you need to do. We need, you need to contact us, so um, we want to make sure that the system is not clogged by the uh, volume of data that is coming from your scanners. Um, all physicians associated with facility chain will get credit. Um, so uh, when you register, you also register your physicians, and that's how we know who is uh, associated in your, uh, D with your DIR chain. And we will credit all the physicians that is under uh, the particular chain. Um, we offer, DIR offer three non mix measures, and all, all measures are DLP-based. Based. DLP is dose length product. It is calculated by multiplying the scanner uh, scanning uh, length and CTDI wall, which is the scanner output. DIR for DIR, you use uh, you send us automatic data uh, using triad. Exams must be mapped to our PID which is Radlex Playbook Index Number, in order to use DIR exams for MIPS. Uh, if you do not map your exams, um, then we are not able to calculate your DIR measures. So it is, it is really a requirement for you to map your DIR exams in order to participate um, in QCDR if you are using DIR measures. Uh, Size-specific DRL or diagnostic reference levels are used to generate performance scores, and I will go into this in a bit. Um, as per our participation agreement, you agree to send us all CT scan data done in your facility, even though CMS requirement is only 50% of your data. So these are the three non mix measures, and these have been uh, these are the new measures. It is uh, different than what we used to have before. Um, so uh, these have been these are completely changed. DIR uh, QCDR preview reports are actually a part of the executive summary report that we generate every quarter. This is a screenshot of our last report, January to June 2017, that you, um, if you submitted data, you should have gotten one. And uh, if you go into your executive summary uh, report, download it and go to page 26, 
you will see this calculating the new non mix measure from GIR, where, um, where it uh, talks about uh, how the six non mix measures were uh, replaced uh, by three non new non mix measures from GIR. And what is the description of these measures? The first one is that 31 is uh, abdomen pelvis with contrast, 32 is chest exams. Uh, chest with that should be with contrast, no, without contrast. I think that uh, that is a um, we will I need to look into that and percent of head, head brain exams without contrast. Uh, I think that should be chest with contrast and head brain without contrast. I will correct those. I apologize for the mistake. Um, dose length product is standardized parameter to measure scanner radiation output to a patient and is useful index to compare protocols across different practices and scanners. And you can read through this and it is very important. I highly encourage you to go through these information that will um, help you to understand these measures and how we calculate this. Next, let's go to the benchmarking methodology. It is available in page 27 of your executive summary report. In 2017, we published US diagnostic reference levels and achievable dose for 10 adult uh, CT examination. And uh, the three uh, exams that uh, we use for calculating the DIR measures are part of those 10 adults City exams. So we took those DLP GRLs and uh, compared compared your data with respect to those published GRLs to see where you stand as a facility um, in deciles. With, uh, and we assigned a deciles score to you. Um, in this screenshot, you see the GRLs for ACVAT 31, which is abdomen pelvis with contrast exams. Um, it is um, broken down by uh, effective diameter. Effective diameter is a diameter that we calculate from the scouts that you send us. So it is calculating, calculated from both anteroposterior and lateral diameters. Now, if you did not send us scouts, then, um, or for in pediatric exams, we have calculated you for uh, calculated your um, your data to um, the average category, which is the all. You can see um, at the bottom, the last row says all. That is the DRL we use to compare your data. If you did not give us the uh, measurement or scouts for this year and also for pediatric patients. So if we saw the age of the patient is less than uh, 19 years old, uh, 19 years, then we compared that uh, exam to uh, this category, which is all, which is the average of all uh, effective diameter categories. But going forward, if uh, two things are going to happen. If um, we are working on pediatric GRL paper, so as long as that is published for all pediatric patients, we will use that GRL uh, that, is, uh, that is going to be published in pediatric GRL paper. And for adult patients or pediatric patients, if we do not get, get uh, scout information, then those exams might not be considered in the denominator. So we might exclude those exams. You won't be getting credit starting uh, next reporting uh, period. You won't be getting credit for those. So we highly suggest that you submit us uh, scouts. Uh, because this is the first year for these measures, we are uh, being a little more flexible and we are um, not excluding your measures. You still get credit if you submitted data to DIR.
So test uh, exams uh, used for calculating ECRAT 32 and head brain uh, exams, um, those measures are also uh, the, the DRLs for these measures broken down by um, effective diameter categories are listed here. So this is very important, and this is uh, in your page 29 of the report that you got. Um, to calculate the denominator for each of the DI or non mass measure, we applied the following inclusion criteria, meaning that if your exams did not meet any of these criteria, then it is not included in the denominator of DIR measure. Exams must be mapped to our PID, and exams must be a single scan exam. I'm going, I'm going to describe what that is in a bit. Uh, exams must provide a non-zero value for both DLP and CTDI wall. This is because if your exam had a zero, zero CTDI wall or zero DLP, that, then that is not a valid exam. Exams um, must provide age. So if we do not know if, if the exam was done for a uh, pediatric population or the adult population, then we do not know which uh, group we should be calculating. Um, so we have to exclude that uh, from calculation of uh, DIR measures. Exams must provide scout or localizer image to ACF for us to be able to calculate thickness. So this is something I touched base on the previous slide. For this year, you still, uh, it, these exams are not exactly excluded, but going forward, they might be excluded. Um, now, uh, so let's, uh, Let's uh, go into the details of uh, ACR 31, uh, 32, and 33, and how you interpret your um, QCR report. Number of valid exams. These uh, column, uh, this this column shows you how many exams you have submitted for each measure. So the number of total exams for which uh, we got um, we got CTDI walls, and you can see in the subscript, subscript, it is written what these mean. So number of valid exams means number of exams that were mapped, had non-zero DLP and CTDI wall, and also CTDI wall must be less than DLP. Why that is? Because DLP is a product of CTDI wall and scatter scanning length. So DLP should always be greater than CTDI wall. If your DLP was less than CTDI wall, chances are um, it is a um, timing run. So we exclude the timing runs. So that's why um, it is not a valid exam. We exclude those exams. And age was not missing. If all of these conditions were um, met, then it is a valid exam and it will be counted in the first column. Now, um, number of uh, multi-scan exams, what is that? So for each of these exams, it should be a single scan exam. Sometimes we um, you will get to see that there are uh, a lot of multi-scan exams Previously, when uh, we used to get scouts, those scouts did not used to have any CTDI wall. So scout CTDI wall, we expected that would be zero. But recently, we are seeing that a lot of scouts do have CTDI walls, and that artificially shows uh, that the exams are multi-scan exams, whereas really it is a single scan exam. We have implemented some cutoff for uh, to, to, to correct that. And in Q3 report, uh, you will see those corrections. But um, if you still see a large number of our exam, your exams are reported as multi-scan exams and are excluded from the denominator, please contact us. 
uh, you will see this error in a, a Q2 report. It is not actually our error. It is our adjustment that we did not do because we did not know um, that uh, scouts are having some uh, CTDI walls. Someone reported to us and we took, uh, uh, we looked into it and we are going to implement that in the uh, Q3 report. So take a look at your Q2, Q3 report and if you still look uh, the numbers are uh, getting numbers that are not really uh, what you expect, then let us know. Now, what is denominator? These are the multi scan exams. Now, the third column, the denominator, is simply the uh, result of uh, if you subtract the multi scan exams from the number of valid exams, you get the denominator. Numerator is the number of exams that were below or uh, at or below DRL. So uh, among all the uh, um, exams that was counted in the numerator, 12, uh, 1,279 exams were at or below the published DRLs for uh, AC at 31. And um, then we did a decile. Decile are simply, uh, ranking and from zero to 10. If um, the higher your ranking is, the better your measure is or your performance is. <coughs> so you can see that for ACRAT 31, um, CT abdomen pelvis with IV contract, it is uh, the decile rank ranges from zero to nine uh, is four. So uh, this facility had uh, is placed in fourth decile. Whereas for uh, ACR 32, it is seventh decile. So they are performing better in ACR 32 than 31. Um, so that's for DIR. I know there is a lot of material for DIR and um, but you can access all of it if you ha if you download your executive summary report and go to the pages that I uh, referenced. And in any case, if you have any question, please let us know. Um, let's move to IR registry for QCDR. IR is our newest registry and um, it, ha it is led by Society of Interventional Radiology and SER. Uh, for data submission, it is automated, automated data submission um, using health level 7 or HL7 triad software. Um, it is web-based flat file data upload. And you can go to the link that is uh, here. Um, you will get it when we post the slides uh, or going to our reg uh, Registry website NRDR, um, then interventional radio interventional radiology registry. We have five IR measures from 26 through 30, and this is the uh, these are the definition of those measures or descriptions. Um, we do not have a report yet because we do not have many facility. Um, not many facilities have submitted data, um, and we are still figuring out how to uh, show it in the report. So um, if you have questions or having difficulty in uh, submitting IR data, uh, please contact us, we will, will help you. Now, a few uh, things about CMS benchmarks. You, um, must have noticed that I did not reference to CMS benchmarks in benchmarks in the uh, QCDR preview reports. I always compared it to the current year registry benchmarks. And there is a reason for that. CMS has provided historical benchmarks in decile for some of the missed and non-missed measures for which data was available. You can access these in our MIPS portal in the performance report page following uh, the link. And this is a, a screenshot. I'm sorry, this screenshot is a little smaller, 
but um, I have star coded in red. If you click that, uh, going into this uh, your performance uh, page, uh, performance report page in the MIPS participation portal, you will be able to see the uh, benchmarks that CMS provided. Now, uh, there are for, for the new measures, for example, GIR, and for continuous measures for which enough data was not available, historical benchmarks from CMS is not yet available. So in those cases, ACR provides same year benchmarks from registry data for comparison and reference purpose for these measures. For DIR, as we discussed, and you saw in the uh, screenshots that we calculated deciles, and for other such measures, we will uh, show the deciles in the performance portal as well as in the preview report before you we submit your data to CMS. With that, um, I uh, I think I have covered that I had a. Um, whatever I had planned to cover. And this is the timeline and key dates for CMS submission, uh, January 31st uh, and March 31st is the deadline when ACS submits your data to CMS. Um, these are the upcoming uh, QCDR webinar. Um, one is uh, Thursday, December 20, 21 from 1 to 2 p.m. Please register. These are important uh, webinars that you must uh, attend before you submit the data to CMS. And uh, there are some more in one in January, one in one in February, and then um, one in January, and then in February and March we have QCD support office hours. Uh, Thank you so much. And if, if you have any question, please email us at nrdsupport.acr.org. Uh, with that, I'm um, going to open it for questions. Um, we, can, we have a panel of experts here to answer questions. So we will see. Uh, Zach, do, you, do we have questions? We do. Uh, we just got a couple. Um, so I'm going to start off with a question from Maribel. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's asking, for measures that don't have a historical CMS benchmark, will you notify participants if there is enough current year volume with ACR? Hi, Maribel. Um, I, so there's, I think, two answers to that. Measures that don't have a historical benchmark, you, um, for your level, your volume level, you would see that in the performance portal. So the um, CMS will only use the data submitted to create a benchmark if there's 20 patients, 20 um, exams or 20 patients and 20 reporters with that volume of data. That's what the threshold is to count data into creating a historical benchmark. Um, so you can see from your volume whether or not you have that level, um, but we won't know that um, from a, we won't really know that from a registry perspective until we know who actually submits the data that CMS may use. So that's hard to determine. It might be at the last minute, and people are often changing whether they submit measures or not at the last minute. So it's questionable that we'd be able to give you that information. Thanks. Uh, the next question comes from Christina. Uh, she's asking, for non-MIPS measures, did I hear correctly that we will be able to submit these measures in the next few weeks? Um, you can submit those anytime. Please do through the their yeah. respective registries. So you you could have been doing it pretty much all all year. Yeah. And if you have uh, if you did not start, I don't know exactly which registry you are talking about. And uh, depending on what registry you are thinking of submitting data for, uh, there could be you know, different scenarios. So if it is DIR, 
then submitting data for the whole year at this point could be a lot of data and you need to contact us so we can schedule. If it is NMD or GREED, the, these are, uh, you know, uh, easier to submit data for the whole year at this point than DIR. So let us know what you plan to do. Um, the next question comes from Carol. Uh, Carol's asking, for lung cancer screening, can we do a flat file upload for multiple patients at once? Is there a template? Yeah, yeah, there's one available online for uh, for multiple patients. Uh, you can put as many patients on there as, uh, as you'd like. Uh, did you mean multiple patients or multiple multiple facilities? Because multiple patients is no problem, multiple facilities is a problem. You right. cannot do uh, multi for each facility. You have to have separate flat file, right? Right. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, we got a few questions here from Carrie, Carrie Berlin. Uh, so I'm going to start with your first one. Is the data on the performance report tab of the MIPS portal oh, okay. completed for the non-MIPS measures? I have a radiologist that did not show up for my, uh, the di sorry, that did not work for my company in 2017 showing up. So a radiologist that did not work for their company is showing up. Could it be, uh, I would assume that's somebody that used to work for your practice who's yes. still showing up in your portal? And so it, I guess, depends on what measures you're talking about. If it's the, um, measures that there's physician level information like NMD and LCSR, then you it, did you remove that physician, uncheck them for MIPS the question. Um, if there's and it may be so it does depend on the database because it may be that there was data for twenty sixteen for them. Um, because we need that for the NMD and LCSR measures. So can you just send us an email and let us work through it with you? Oh, and we got a clarification from Christina. She was asking about uh, submitting non-MIPS measures in the coming weeks. She actually meant uh, attesting for improvement activities. Oh. And yeah, that is correct. Um, within a few more days, that uh, that part of the MIPS portal should be available. So yeah, just give it a couple days and it should be working soon. Um, another question here from Perry. She's asking, is anyone else having issues submitting MIPS measures on the new or on the portal? We get a download new template error, even though we have downloaded the new template. Yeah, we received a couple of requests about the same issue. Um, usually when you download the template, skip the first row, which is the header row. Don't overwrite it or don't paste over it. Just paste the data on starting on second row onward. So that may resolve the issue. But um, if you still have an issue, just uh, submit a ticket to us and then we can set up a meeting with you and go over it. Um, you can send the ticket to um, NRDR support at acr.org. Okay, and um, one uh, one last question from Carrie uh, about the GRID preview report. She says, I do not see the GRID QCDR preview report on my master account. Do we only get this report at a child level? Um, she says it's all of the grid measures. It's almost like it is two years worth of data. Uh, yes, for grid, uh, you should uh, get the measures for each of your child facilities because of all of our uh, QCDR is at the facility level. And I really do not understand what you said about two years of data um she's seen 
data for one physician for two years, I guess, including 2016-17. Um, oh. For uh, the physician that's left. So, Carrie, will you send this? Could you yes. submit a ticket so we can? Yeah, we out? need to take a look at your uh, issue and to be able to resolve and investigate. Please send uh, create a ticket to us. And again, you can make tickets by, uh, you can send an email to nrdrsupport at acr.org, or you can just go to nrdrsupport.acr.org and submit a ticket uh, through your browser that way. Yes, and that website that uh, Zach just gave you the um, URL for, that has a number of articles in the Solutions Center that might help you with some of your questions. So take a look at that. Okay, right now we don't have any other questions, so. Okay, so uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, joining the webinar, and um, I hope that uh, you got some of the information um, that will be useful. I also know that I covered a lot of material, which might be a little overwhelming for you. In uh, any time, if you feel like uh, you want to discuss some of the reports with us, please let us know. I will be happy to go over uh, any any part of your report with you uh, in order to as better assist you. Um, again, thank you so much for joining uh, the webinar, and uh, I hope that you have a great uh, afternoon.